It's the 1989 Soul Train Awards, and Bobby Brown is very charismatic, and uh, Whitney Houston notices that, and she happens to be sitting at one point behind him and sort of flirts with him by punching him in the back of the head, you know, tapping him, and he looks at her like, you better not do that again. Now, she said that she was intrigued by that, a man who wasn't impressed with her, a man who didn't roll over because she was the Whitney Houston. You know, if you look at her trajectory, you can chart her fall directly to her meeting and falling in love with Bobby Brown. She loved him. She actually loved him. What she liked about him was he was just Bobby. He wasn't He wasn't pretentious. Um, she could just relax and just be herself. She didn't have to be uh, a perfect, you know, beautiful queen, Princess Whitney with him. Bobby Brown was the bad boy. Their princess was being tarnished. I did not like Bobby Brown. I liked his music, but I did not want him for my Whitney. When Bobby came on the scene, I can tell you categorically that we in the band were incredulous. For us, we saw him as a distraction. She definitely wanted to uh, squash the rumors that she was a lesbian. And by getting married, that would silence the people who wanted to out her. I had the most beautiful wedding that I had ever been to. <laughs> And I was married. <laughs> I was in it. And it was mine. And it was mine. <laughs> 1992 was just a huge year for Whitney Houston because it's not only the year that she and Bobby Brown got married, 92 is also when The Bodyguard came out. The Bodyguard was probably the height of her career, especially with I Will Always Love You. I remember the first day of shooting, I was so nervous. I was so nervous, you know, and, and I have to tell you, because Kevin was the best. It was groundbreaking in the sense that you had an African-American woman and a white man. Why is I Will Always Love You a number one song for 14 weeks in a row? Because it's on the soundtrack of a movie about a failed romance between a white guy and a black woman at a time of racial division in the United States, at a time when we can't all just get along. When I tell people, I played the sax a little on that song, what song? I Will Always Love You. I just take a deep breath, you know? And so, yeah, now it is, it is a calling card. And I will say this, Whitney it would always tease us. She would say, okay, use my name if it'll help, but it ain't gonna always help. She rose to superstardom, and uh, her music was heard in every corner of this world. I think that was a lot of pressure, uh, to be this icon and this diva and this superhuman. And she was just a human. She was at her peak, and she was about to jump off of a precipice. And nobody knew it. People around her said she was a ticking time bomb. She was found face down in the bathtub. The temperature of the water. Very, very hot. Very strange. 